I want to welcome you to today's Rossmore Counseling Optimum Wellness Lecture. Today's speaker is Tin Rin Chu, registered dietitian, board certified specialist in oncology nutrition, and adult weight management. For the last 24 years, she has conducted regular nutrition workshops through the cancer support community. She currently works privately in Lafayette, California, and she provides nutritional counseling to individuals and family members <clears throat> doing their, during their cancer treatments and post-treatment survivorship. Please help me in welcoming Ms. Chu to the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Good morning. You know, it's a great privilege to be here and such an honor. This is my first, actually, first in-person class since COVID. And I just couldn't believe it that you brave souls are you're here. And I often tell my friends, I say, one of the things most difficult to do in, in, in this community, Rossmore, is that this is actually the collectives of intellectuals. And also, all the accomplishments in life and you all are smart, you all are well-read, well-traveled. So from the, that perspective, a lot of times I say, ah, it's just so intimidating. But today I can come here truly with a great honor and humility and just want to, uh, number one, thank you for coming. Number two, for those of you who are uh, at home uh, doing the Zoom, thank you so much. Basically, my own heart is that after all everything that is said and done, and I, my own personal prayer is that you'll be able to take one to two pearls home. And let's get started, all right? And, um, Sunday, I'm going to give you two uh, real cases because in my mind, what is the most relevant for people? Uh, since the topic is, can food really be that medicine or the farm be really be your, your pharmacy? And yes and no, basically, question, depending on circumstances. But sometimes there are always, I call it, such as miracles, right? And the miracles can be going through the different route. And so by Sunday, as I was pondering, what are some of the best um, uh, examples I have in my life of working with uh, clients and patients or friends, too many to count for? Um, so finally, I call my 10 year, 10 year friend, um, this person named Debbie. So Sunday afternoon, I said, Debbie, number one, I want to get your permission to use your case as a presentation. Uh, would that be okay? Number two, I want you to re-review your case with me because I didn't walk you through your journey. I only knew her uh, by about seven years ago. But Debbie right now is 61 years old, and she, about 10 years ago, uh, October by this year, 10 years ago, uh, for some crazy reason, she was perfectly healthy, 51-year-old at a time, and all of a sudden, she couldn't breathe. When she goes out and she bursts out of profuse sweating and couldn't move and literally collapsed on the ground. And it took her about two months, went through various different doctors, courses of antibiotics. Finally, after two months in October 30, 30th, I believe, um, 10 years ago, when she was 51 years old and was diagnosed acute interstitial lung disease, and end up with one of the worst kind was um, um, pulmonary fibrosis. And it was one of the worst, and her case was deteriorating rapidly. So all the physicians from all the institutions recommended unanimously she needs to have lung transplant. That was um, October 30, uh, 30th, uh, um, however many years ago, I mean, minus uh, currently from 10 years ago. And uh, that was it. She really hesitated to get on this transplant. But UCSF doctor told her, you won't survive. You won't even be able to live without transplant. So she went back home. So she started reading all the books there was, and also plus prayers in her faith. So she told me, she said, Tinrin, one day I heard. Nothing is 
outside of my power during she was, while she was praying. So she started on fasting. Uh, and I call it, uh, she called it Daniel fast. Basically, she started on all the plant-based diet. Diet, what she did was that she removed all that processed foods, all the food that was perceivable to increase her inflammation. Because her acute lung disease was, wasn't because of any past family history or whatever she did. Um, most of the doctors just believed that was a autoimmune response. Can you imagine that autoimmune response? And so, so she, anyway, what she did was, she said, I just remove everything that's processed, anything that is perceivable to increase my inflammation. And number two, I also did a lot of juicing, vegetable juicing, so on and so forth. So only thing I ate was everything God created right from the ground in the fresh sense. So that was her journey. An interesting thing was that even though she was in the highest dose of prednisone, by the time I knew her at the time, I knew this lady had gained about 60 pounds uh, due to the result of prednisone. And she continues on with her journey, and after a while, after 40 days and time went on, she apparently um, was fine, never got on the transplant. And about three years later, so when I talked to her about uh, uh, the seven years prior to now, now uh, she said, Tinrin, believe it or not, my doctor told me that I have a perfect set of lungs. And that's her, okay? Uh, so, so she's the one that really, I call it very dramatic. Could be the nutrition did it. Could it be that the prayer did it. Could be multiple different things, right? Could it be also one's will to live can be. And secondly, as this person, you'll see it, the slide. This is a 60-year-old gentleman who has been battling with a psoriasis without any remission, 40 years. He had tried all the different medication, topically, internally, orally, and she. Um, and basically, we met is through the integrated medicine uh, clinic through our um, the cancer center I was working in in the Berkeley. And so, what the doctor do was that, and she, he came in to have regular acupuncture. Yes, he tried to modify his diet to the best ability. He took daily multivitamins like everybody else would do uh, from wherever that through the market, but without any success. So finally, doctor put him on a change of set of a specialty supplement, just basically specialty, uniquely formulated, has everything, the easier absorbed and everything. So this was the initial presentation. Literally been dealing with for 40 years, and you can see from his arms, and he was still having all that ointment on, on, on put on his arms. So after about 10 weeks, okay, 10 weeks, this is what happened. The arms got cleared, the belly got clear, as you can see the photo. And the interesting thing is that this, in his opinion, was the first remission that he's ever had. And life went on. And so my question to you, true and false, I'm going to ask you quite a few questions. And many of you probably this very elementary, uh, just in your own head, I'm not going to ask you the answer. Eggs raise cholesterol level. Yes? No? Yes or no? Okay, but uh, uh, the answer, uh, uh, to answer it, uh, not really. It doesn't really raise the cholesterol. The, the, the one primary reason that raises our cholesterol through our diet is, uh, is saturated fat, as was that trans fat. Um, it's not the cholesterol from your eggs, okay? So a lot of researches are changing. So you and I, we're about the same age, literally. So our learning from the past is eggs for you. Eggs are for you. My, um, that's, so that, that's one thing is new. As long as I take all medica and, uh, prescribed medications, my doctor says, I will be healthy and I am healthy, true or false. Uh, yes, no, okay. <laughs> yes, because medicine can keep you healthy in a sense, right? Uh, flax seeds reduce prostate cancer and also reduce breast cancer. This is my specialty area, of course. Does it, does it work? We shall see later. 
And the last thing is eating a plant-based diet or predominantly plant-driven can reverse diabetes. True or false? Yes, you all passed that. Everything is going to be said. And something I said, what should I have you all take home? Maybe some of these are very basic. And some of the things may be something new, but I want you to kind of have some understanding. You all know what food plays in your body. But, um, but it's just a little bit more if you need any motivation. So what is functional foods? These are the buzzword in current marketplace. Uh, functional medicine, functional foods, functional uh, supplements, okay? What are they really? And understand some of the medical and the nutri nutrient interactions. Typically for a person who is 60, average 60 age or 70, have, are on about good about two to three medications. Isn't that right? And, and you guys going to do your own assessment and supplements or without supplements. <clears throat> the definition for medicine is that the science or the art of dealing with maintenance of the health or prevention or even cure of the diseases. Another definition can be a substances or preparation of methodology in treating the disease. Okay? And so remember the word is maintenance of health prevention, alleviation, and cure. And that is what doctors went to medical school for, correct? And food, what does the food really do? Substances consisting protein, fats, carbohydrate, that is basically we all know, right? Protein is like your animal meats, uh, or uh, carbohydrates are your fruits, your vegetables, your bread, uh, your pasta, they are considered carbohydrates because they turn into sugar. And the fats, you know what fats, all these are the energy source, along with other nutrients, such as your vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals, and what they are used for your body and or the, any of the organism for health, for growth, for uh, viability, for survival. And so what that said is that all that food has a great impact on the maintenance of the one's health or destroy one's health. Debbie, my friend, again, back then, she said, Tinrin, every time I take my two dogs to the pets for any kind of issues and questions, the pet doctors would always ask first question, what are you feeding your dogs? And she said, throughout my issues with, uh, with all that lung issue, no one had ever asked me what I was eating. And so my question to you all is also, I want to know is how many of your vets if you have dogs or pets or anything, ever ask you, what do you feed your dogs or feed your cats? And, okay, great. And do physicians ask that question? And I'm, I'm not saying that we're, uh, I don't bash my, any of the doctors because I know how busy they are. Truly, the medicine is so broad, so wide, okay? But I feel that we are missing that maintenance health piece. And basically, currently, maintain, maintenance is just check on the box, right? Are you, are you having your exercise? Are you or, or one of those? Or, are you, or did you have your COVID injection, which is a prevention? Did you have a pneumonia shot? Did you have your flu shot? Did you have your colonoscopy mammograms? The list goes on and on. These are the preventative, where we measure your health by the prevention we've done if you had done those things. And the alleviation and cure basically will be the medication and the medication or chemotherapy or the radiation or the surgery or the biological agent. And so what that said is that there is differences. There are times and needs for absolutely for the medicine, no doubt. But, but what these two proverbs it really makes perfect sense. One is by Ayurveda medicine. It, this is the traditional uh, Hindu system um, of, of, of uh, dealing with uh, medicine. Uh, the, the Ayurveda medicine basically says the diet, if the diet is wrong, the med medicine is no use. If the diet is right or correct, 
There's no medicine, has no need. Isn't that profound? Right. And the Chinese medicine also elaborate a little bit. He who takes medicine and neglects his diet. And his, I mean, his wastes the skills of the physician. Truly is, okay. And, and, and so I'm going to proceed with now. Talking about nutrition. Interesting thing, I want to tell you the story. The story is that these two mice, basically we call them agouti mice. They have, believe it or not, they have genetically identical gene in these two mice. And you say, why is one is so plump and yellow and the other one is skinnier, smaller, and brown? And the story goes is this. This is a story basically started about uh, early 2000, um, early in, uh, 19, uh, 19, 1990, 19, and I'm uh, trying to think my dates now. But during that time, at, at, uh, through Dr. Gerbil's research, is that the agouti gene is very unique. The, in the sense, agouti gene gives the mice the yellow fur coat. And what it also does is that it gives that the, it, it has this gene, it causes the, um, the, the appetite insatiable, and it's going to eat itself to obesity, diabetes, and early death, and plus cancer, okay? And then, so, so the Goody gene, basically, that's just its characteristic. So what the Dr. Jertle did was that they gave, he gave the two groups, the mother, the mother of these agouti and mice, a diet, their standard diet, but the group was divided in two groups. One group is feeding what we thought we called a methyl donor, basically choline and B, B vitamins, B, um, B2, folic acid, B12, and nosobatane. And the other group was the standard diet, whatever they fed other animal. So result of study was that, and li they literally saw is that they shut off that agouti gene. So the result was uh, the study is this, oh, geez. The offspring, basically, they have that shut off that agouti gene. This, uh, so that they actually, they don't eat um, uh, uh, voraciously. They eat normally as normal rats uh, or mice, and um, they live as long as normal mice. And the, uh, the, the one with a normal diet, and still the offspring is. And the research took further by about 2007. Uh, what they saw is that this, uh, this has to do with the maternal diet now, and that actually the very beginning of nutrition effect on epigenetics now, meaning that the nutrition will in influence the gene. Basically, epi is whatever's on the top, and um, a gene regulation, okay. So what they saw, the generations to come, even not only the second generation is brown, um, brown mice, but even the third generation continue to exist the same gene expression, even though they do carry that agouti gene, but that gene was down-regulated or uh, cut off or low expression. So result, even the third generation. So this study actually impacts a, if you say, why do I know this? Because in from our cancer arena is that a lot of times women will come to me and say, Timon, did I do this to myself? No, may not be, not at all, right? Because now we can trace even to the maternal diet, grandparents, grandmother's diet, all will influence two, three gener generations down the road. So it's not as simple as we think our current diet would do something to our body, absolutely, but what, what influence next and further generation to come. And so, Time Magazine, uh, so eventually Time Magazine, uh, this uh, by about early 2000s, that's started with an uh, epigenomic genome um, project uh, starting. And so by 2010, Time Magazine, I'm pretty sure you all know, familiar with uh, uh, this picture, the greatest discovery, that gene is not your destiny any longer. 
Uh, I'm not sure if you remember that magazine. So the new science of the epigenetics, so what we're talking about really is our epigenetics. What does it mean really? Epi, epi means the gene is sitting here, whatever's above around the gene, is so your environment, your food and everything will influence that gene expression, okay? So you never change your gene, you still have your eyes, you still have your nose, just like your family. But how healthy the expression of youthfulness, expression of health, expression of vitality, all through the environmental issue. So, the other one is even, even more interesting, this is aging because as by about 1980s, NIH, National Institute of Health, start looking at the baby boomer generation as baby boomer are getting older. So there's a study going on by Dr. Weintraub, Dr. Pola. What they did was the monkey doctors, we know them as, at the uh, Wisconsin, uh, at the uh, University of Wisconsin. What they did was taking the primates, monkeys because they have the almost, uh, lives longer. So you can't really use mice to do the study. You can't use butterfly anymore. You can't use because we don't have that length of time to compare what's going on, especially we're studying aging. So this study premises of what if we control restrict the calories, would they live longer? So what Dr. Weintraub, Dr. Prola did, they did a purified food. Everything is purified, okay? And so it's standard because for them, just remember this word is basically ultra-processed purified in for the sake of standardization, okay? So they can have a do better portion, uh, monitoring, so and so forth. So, uh, so what happened with this, the, the group of monkey, Kanto was uh, assigned to the group that is with 30% caloric restriction. Okay, and the other group is eating at will. Whatever you want to eat, as, eat as much as you want to. So as a result of study, as you could see, is this. The left group is 30%, and by the way, this study started about 1989, uh, to be precise, ended about 2008. Um, it was gradual because when he first started reducing 10%, didn't see anything, reduced 20%, didn't see anything, until when it's actually reduced by 30%, it saw was that something happened. And then after about by 2008, many of the monkey uh, started dying off, so they decided probably this was the time to, to find some of the conclusion. As a result, what they found was that um, the mon monkey that eat at will at that's three times the ratio of diabetes or arthritis, just like any human beings we, we can possibly do that carry that body weight. And they also aged much, much significantly. And they also have two times the rate of cancer. And also they have a heart disease. And so by end of the study, by 2000, and uh, so 13%, the 30% restriction diet monkey, um, uh, died and versus 39% of the monkey who, who ate. So this was a very beginning, uh, so scientists are realizing, boy, overfeeding may not be the best thing because at that time in U.S. we have prevalence food, obesity start on the rise, heart ca cardiovascular was on the rise. So at the same time, exactly about the same time, um, besides the Wisconsin study, NIH funded another study uh, by National Institute of Aging. Okay, this government sponsored now uh, instead of university, but they all are collaborating. But this group is totally different. Okay, is uh, the is 20% less. Okay, but the diet is totally different. This group they're eating the natural food. Okay, natural food meaning that they're still rationed, they still measured, but the food is not uh, ultra purified food. But they were pro uh, they, they were just grind up the real food from ground, like the uh, corn meals, fruits and vegetables, uh, potatoes and the meat even grind it up and feeding the monkeys. Okay, so so this monkey was full ration the diet every day they have full ration, and uh, this group is twenty five. The interesting, interesting result was that 
Um, what I want you to see the picture is that you see both group of monkey, this definitely appears older, right? The one on the right appears big, uh, bigger and older, more frail, and this still appear very young. And this actually, when you look at more of the photos from the research, this group of monkey has so much more white hair too, <laughs> okay? And uh, what caught my attention was the two groups, of mon this group of monkey versus this group of monkey was dramatically appearing it's different. The reason for that, because this was using the real food, not ultra-refined. So at the end of the result of study, is very interesting. They did not see the second group, the 25% less calorie, had, um, the, what's the word? Um, they, they didn't have, a, 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 they, they have the same lifespan, basically. They didn't live longer. What they saw, what the researchers saw was the 25% less calorie group. Actually, they live much more healthier until the old age, um, old age, but their disease, some of them, they also had diabetes, they have arthritis, they also have a cancer, but a very old age and a very short time. So the conclusion of that study was that the the health span, the healthy life, length of life, is much longer than the other group. That was a conclusion. So, uh, so with the starving yourself will help you to live longer. The answer, I would say yes and no, depends on what you are starving from. Okay, the type of foundation to diet actually makes a huge sense in terms of the quality of life. And that, that's my own con uh, conclusion with that. So further, further down is that now this another revolution study came about, all about human genome. And you say, well, how it relates to food and our lifestyle is that many of you probably know Dr. Elizabeth Blackburn. Um, she did, she and her group did a revolutionary study about chromosome. Basically what they found out was that a chromosome, the length of the chromosome is determination. The end cap, okay, we call the telomere effect. The end cap really determines the length of our age. And when the length is longer, is healthier. The length is very short. We do know the lifespan is short. And secondly, also, the, the, this almost kind of think this like your tennis shoelace with the plastic end cap. When the, the, the shoe is being worn, so worn out, the, um, that plastic cap, end cap, start breaking up, right? And, and the, 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 the material start frailing. Same thing with your, um, uh, uh, with your, um, uh, with your uh, um, uh, chromosome as well. So what Dr. Elizabeth um, um, experienced or found is that for all these years, we often feel that we can change our genes, we can change our genome. We're just true, however we could influence it. What's going to be influencing how healthy your telomere, food, nutrients, exercise, your body weight, sleep, stress, and environmental toxin exposure, cigarette smoking, such as. Okay, it has profound impact on the chromosome. Isn't that amazing? Amazing, right? So what I'm saying is that we can control when the time we're gonna go, but we can certainly control how healthy we can be. Okay. And this comes upon by about, by about late 2010, American Institute of Cancer Research came out of this now. We know enough by then, by 2010. Nutrigenomics, nutrigenetics, epigenomics, epigenetics. Everything has to be the influence of what's going to influence your gene expression. And how is your gene going to influence how you respond to your environment, respond to your food, respond to everything you take in? We start seeing things. So this is the picture that I use for my own cancer patients because my goal is to encourage them, foster that motivation for them to really see from the cellular sense, from even their DNA level, okay? Because food will help their DNA repair, 
constantly repairing because our body is making 30 billion cells each single day. Isn't that amazing? So we can influence how the cells are going to behave down the road. Um, so can also help the cancer-causing agent in our environment to metabolize. We now know certain food can activate that detoxification process. Really, is about the nutrient components, and we also know can we also know that can do the that it's control the proliferation. How fast cancer cell grow? Can we possibly slow down and just coexist? Could it be? Yes, absolutely. Uh, hormone regulation, this has to do with the breast cancer, uh, uh, prostate cancer, apoptosis is cancer where the programmed cancer kill. Can food have the power to stop or even cause a cancer cell to commit suicide, self-death? Um, inflammation, that's a huge thing. The food, exercise, and body weight have a great influence on the immune function and the inflammation and how the cell divide and so on and so forth. So take a look. For the past, I would say for past since 1960s, with all that modern um, technologies, food preparations, everything all the till now, for the 50 years almost, the typical American diet typically is high in the fat, which is animal fats, saturated fats, and trans fat. A typical American diet is also high in the simple sugar, simple carbohydrate, instead of like say whole wheat bread uh, would be the white bread. And we eat only the potatoes without the skin, right? White pasta, so on and so forth. I remember years ago, um, we didn't have white rice. And then when white rice came about the market, wow, my whole Chinese uh, communities uh, decided, we don't like the brown rice. They're too rough in their mouth. So they chose to eat all the white rice, right? <laughs> uh, so, so, so those are evolving over the past how many years? And so um, um, animal fats, animal protein, basically um, high sodium and also very low in the nutrient density. This is standard American diet pretty much. And you'll take a look at the plant-based. I'm not talking about being a vegan completely, being a plant food, but I'm talking about predominantly a plant a based diet. Typically, they're healthier with the fats, particularly with olive oil, okay, and more complex carbohydrates, so you tend to have a higher fiber. And you also have a plant-based protein, which is heart-friendly, which is uh, insulin-friendly, which is, is kidney-friendly. And and the other thing is that it's high in the potassium, high in the magnesium. You know potassium and magnesium is two elements of very short, very, very much lacking in the typical American diet, and high in the nutrient density. So talk about the inflammation then. So what is an inflammation? Uh, back to the uh, standard American diet, it is basically is primarily pro-inflammatory, if you were to ask me for one summary. It's a purely pro-inflammatory. Basically, the inflammation in your body, you may not be able to see it at all. You can see the surface if you get a bug bite it will swell up, turn red. But internally, when it's like eruption with all that inflammation, you can't see. You just can't see. It just lives there. It slowly, slowly destroys your own health over the time, time period. So, so inflammation basically influence. If I were to say 20 years ago when I was talking about one of the doctors called me on the floor and said, Timon, I heard you talk to, to the patient that cancer is inflammation. And I said, yes. But it wasn't really in the horizon yet, but now we know everything has to do with inflammation, even cardiovascular doctor. Okay, heart doctor. Uh, one lecture I went to about 10 years ago, I forever appreciate that physician. He went up the podium, the first thing he opened his mouth, because I was just talking to one of my colleagues, I said, the cardiovascular disease, cholesterol issue, everything, all have to do, doesn't have so much to do with the cholesterol issue, rather has to do with the inflammation. So, 
That physician went up, that was his first statement actually, 75% of heart disease is not due to the cholesterol, but due to inflammation. Okay. So inflammation involves everything, even the autoimmune diseases. So when, if you see this diagram, you will totally understand why my girlfriend Debbie removed all that perceivable inflammation in her own body. And um, so till this day, she's still perfect and clean bill. Even she said, so she didn't shed that, all that 60 pounds, okay, honestly. Because steroid just did something to her body. She could not even lose weight. She does weight training, she lifts weights, she eats perfectly healthy. But I said, Debbie, just settle with it. I said, as long as you're healthy, that matters. And even her blood pressure is perfectly normal. She doesn't need a, any one medication, except sometimes she might have a joint pain. Um, so that's pretty much it. So what are we talking about? What are the anti-inflammatory foods? It's omega-3, it's one of very well-known omega-3. You say, where does omega-3 come from? It's from your fish, deep sea water fish, your fish oil, uh, your ground flax seed, your chia seeds, and some almond, and some of the nuts. Uh, primarily, I would say the usable of omega-3 really is from your, your deep sea ocean fish. And the other very strong anti-inflammatory foods will be all your herbs and spices. Hottest uh, herb in the, this past five years has been what? Can you guess which one? Yeah, I heard it. I heard it. Turmeric. Yes. Yes, turmeric. Right, the hottest one is our well, turmeric. I think that there's so many beyond. We haven't even ex start exploring the entire herbal kingdom. Okay, my wildest dream is that um, when the cancer su support community is going to have their own, own land and their own facility, we'll have an herb garden. Okay, so I'm doing my own herb garden at home as well. So uh, plant everything that you possibly to and can. Turmeric is one, is very popular and because it works on the brain, works on the inflammation, works on the osteoarthritis, the list goes on and on. And so the other one, definitely fresh vegetables. Fresh vegetable is a very funny thing. And I, if I, I have that slides in here, I'll show you later. It depends on how much a person to eat. United States government says a five servings of fruits and vegetables. Is that enough, truly? I personally, I don't believe so because that five servings, literally, I would say that was, should be based on the person who weighs about 150 pounds. And provided most, I would say most clients or most residents here in the Rossmore, you all are pretty, pretty good, you know? <laughs> in my opinion, as a dietitian, you, you, you're, you're not the, the, the truly that gross obese, but you're, you're exercising, you have all the activities here so well. But, but as we get older, our vegetable volume should continue to increase instead of decreasing because we can bank on our youthfulness to su support us. We, are, we have to base on the volume of that fresh foods uh, to support us. Fresh fruits will be uh, definitely whole grains and beans, and, uh, the list goes on. So functional foods we talked about specifically, what are we talking about? Can we really eat that much? Basically the functional foods definition, that food that provides health benefit beyond what the basic nutrients we thought of. Years ago, we often said, oh, 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 the food is protein, carbohydrate, and fats, right? And then we talked about the vitamins. So you, we need a vitamin A for this, we need a vitamin C for that, we need the zinc, we need this, this, all the multivitamins, but the functional foods beyond just those elements. So what we're really talking about is that the chemical compound in the foods now, okay? What they do is that they help you to prevent disease, they may even help you to ameliorate certain chronic illnesses. And finally, what are the, uh, the, the interesting thing in the recent 10 years in the marketplace is that you start seeing all that supplements or even the food labeled, right? Labeled, antioxidant beverage. What does that supposed to mean? 
Okay, they will label something because of food and, uh, food, uh, food and drug regulation. They can label it as treating the disease. They can somehow imply, okay, and they'll imply as antioxidant, they, they'll imply as for the bone health, they'll imply for your heart health, but what's in that thing? We have no idea. We kind of know because they may say it contains resveratrol, but to what amount? One little dust, the, 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 the one little pinch, or the volume. So typically, all these I call a functional foods in the marketplace is sometimes it's almost like a gimmick. Don't get sold to it. Okay, that that that's my recommendation. But that's what's in the marketplace. Second thing in the marketplace. Literally, the functional supplements, right? To help with your uh, arthritis, to help with your heart, to help with your eyes, or to help your what? Ultimately, anti-aging. We are going to be seeing lots and lots of anti-aging supplements in the market. We're gonna see a lot, uh, whether specialty formulation or general marketplace, and because that's the trend, because all based on the science. But then does that mean the marketplace has the best product? It's sometimes left to debate because consumer, consumer report recently said 50%, some of these um, um, targets uh, supplement 50% that they have nothing zero in it. And the rest of them, probably 10%, if any at all. So power of the plant foods, basically what I'm talking about is really the power of your uh, phytonutrients, phyto, plant, chemical compound, coming from the plant source. Literally is beyond what I can calculate. Uh, uh, when, I, uh, when I first started out looking at phyto, phytonutrients, at the time that was about 20 years ago, it has only 7,000. So then I started changing my lecture content to about 7,000, and then changed to 10,000, then changed to 200,000. Now it's beyond 700,000, I believe. Okay, so, so what do they do? Briefly, antioxidant. What does it mean, antioxidant? It's not measured by the amount of vitamin C in the blueberry or vitamin C in the green tea, but it's, it is measured by that antioxidant capacity. You know, what is oxidation? The easiest thing to describe oxidation is that you cut apple in half, apple turns brown over time, right? But if you put the vitamin C, orange juice on top of the apple, it retards that browning process. So that vitamin C or that orange juice or lemon juice act as antioxidant, okay? So, so preventing that cellular damage deterioration. That's called the antioxidant. And that is also one of the biggest things on the anti-aging because you prevent that aging cellular uh, damage. So antioxidants, so uh, for example, half a cup of blueberries has more than, even though it doesn't have a thousand milligrams of vitamin C, but it has more than 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C plus 800 milligram uh, uh, IU of vitamin E combined of that activity. Although the blueberry may not contain vitamin E that much, probably just two units of uh, vitamin E can just be about 40 milligrams of vitamin C, but then eating that real food because chemical compound increase that capacity to about 10 to 100 times more than you would with a supplement. Am I making sense to you? I hope so. Okay, and reduces inflammation. I said a lot of herbs has that capacity. Cell-to-cell -cell dialogue. Don't think that your cell just left it there by itself. Your eye, uh, eye cell is by itself. Your, your muscle cell by itself. Your body is continuous, like a loop system, continue dialogue. Cell-to-cell, enzyme-to-enzyme. It's 24-7, nonstop working relationship. Uh, generate, repair the cells, generate the cells, as well as support your immune function, vasodilation. Um, so, so we'll use a few food as example later on. Uh, vasodilation, a lot of people say, what is that supposed to mean? Basically relaxes your, 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 your blood vessel. What are the classic food? You probably heard, um, yeah, the hottest thing, one of the hottest things in the TV commercial is beet juice. 
You heard about that in your, uh, your, 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 your TV? Yeah, beet juice. So beet juice, celery, and, and, um, and all those, uh, pretty much. And watermelon, and they all have that vasodilation effect because it contains nitric oxide. Okay, uh, so that's them. And thin, um, also the food has ability to thin the blood, the classics, your fish oil, and some of the Chinese wood ear has definitely ability to thin the blood out. Why so prevent the blood clot? Pl prevent blood clot. Uh, antimicrobial, that's a huge kingdom, but the classic one will be an onion garlic family, um, this, particularly during the COVID season, the flu season, right? And hormone metabolism, again, this is related to the, my, the, 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 the cancer arena about the breast cancer. Uh, it's about, it's not about you increase uh, the hormone, but regulate the hormone level, okay? The uh, detoxification process is from the liver sense. The classic one would be your cruciferous vegetable. So we'll take a look. The classification literally, um, don't even pay attention to none of those words, okay? Because the charts, if you were going to look for charts, I just grabbed someone, at one of these uh, through the internet. To me, it just makes a lot of sense because the classification is huge, just like when you take as human beings here, you have Smith family, you have, um, you have have like a Lee family, you have a Robert family, you have all that family, right? And uh, uh, besides that, just happen under Smith's family, all of a sudden, uh, one of the sons have about 10, uh, 10 or 20 children, then that becomes an even huge family. You, you, get, you get my drift? So, so, so basically, currently, there are so many. What I'm going to highlight on, I constantly talk about carotenoids because it's under the terpene. But most people don't know it's terpene, but most people recognize one of carotenoids. We'll talk about saponins, same family, but they are totally different function. These are pretty much you see in your flax seeds, your soybeans, your seeds and nuts, it has those things. Pheno is big, big group too. Pheno, basically polyphenol, you heard about it, so from your dark chocolate, from your tea green tea particularly, right? And, but then you also have another family called the flavonoids. You said, how can they be in the same family? Don't get me, because based on their chemical structure. So the flavonoid, if you can see that word, the flavonoid basically is from your berry family. Anything that with like a dark uh, berry things or the purple color, um, even your eggplant has a flavonoids. And your organosulfur, Basically, is sulfur compound. You can imagine is your onion, your garlic, uh, your your cruciferous, uh, because they give you that odor, right? When you cook, they, they really kind of smells. And uh, 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 well, what is it? polysaccharides? Polysaccharides, basically, some kind of sugar particles. The classic stands out to me will be your mushroom family. Okay, they do have a quite a bit uh, immune stimulating effect as was immune support effect. And the last one, uh, lipid family. Lipid family uh, can be marine algae, can be your seeds, flax seeds, can be your fish oil. So, so the list goes on and uh, give you, uh, the, the, to quickly take a look is that your vitamin berries. Most people know berries is high in the vitamin C content and fiber, but that actually it contains one. Uh, nowadays, I tell people, I tell my kids, my husband, I say, we're not eating as the vitamin sake. We're eating for the, the compounds. We really are eating the compounds, okay? Um, because they can ward off, dilute the cancer carcinogen, car cancer-causing agent, dilute them. So berries, it has an enthocyanin. This is another buzzword, ladies and gentlemen. Currently, as of two years ago, this, uh, this is another hottest compound in the marketplace as a research. So I can see there's a lot of supplement coming about as enthocyanin. What it does do to the body is that number one, it corrects and brings the cardiovascular health. Number two, maybe lower the blood sugar. Number three, maybe the brain, brain um, Alzheimer as well cognitive de decline. And um, when I read the research, I say, whoa, Timran, maybe you need to give a try. 
yeah, because um, that sometimes I, I'm willing to try so many different things after my two brain concussion. There are days I just can't remember things or the words doesn't come out as well. But, um, but anthos is cyanin is one of the hottest thing. It's that purple, bluish color compound in the food. Okay, so scientists basically extract that. And also seems to give the people that energy and also that, again, has to do with anti-aging. So it seems that this, as some people would say, seems like it accumulates everything in that, in, in this anthocyanin, okay? So it's a definitely, but from the functionality now, now, because from the berry sense, okay, the berry group has an anti-inflammatory effect. It can, it definitely has an anti-cancer. So, so if you ever see me, uh, typically I tell my patient, just eat your berries about three, four times a day. My girlfriend's husband had a quadruple bypass about eight years ago. So he's the one, they, they, they live in Rossmore, if you're watching this. And I believe that he is eating one basket blueberry every single day. Okay, and I also have another friend is also the, does the same thing. One basket, a small basket, six ounces basket, blueberry every single day. And I think that's a very good strategy, actually. And lower the blood pressure and uh, against the fluid code and also boost the cognitive function, as I said earlier. Cruciferous vegetable, this is one of the very amazing, amazing food. The original study has a, a, a tribute to a, a researcher at the Harvard uh, Institute and Harvard Medical School, Harvard Research Center. So cruciferous vegetable, basically we call it brassica family. It's your broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, that group, okay? It's, a, it's a quite a bit of food for us. That's why the kale has come to the supermarket. Kale used to be the dressing for the plate, right? But now the kale becomes edible a piece of the vegetable. So it's not only rich in the vitamin K and vitamin C, but it's also, what it does is actually gives you these enzymes okay, to inactivate the estrogen in the colon. That's number one. Number two, about 20 years ago, yeah, literally, if I'm dating myself, about the study really came out of close to 2000. At that time, what they saw, because we're beginning at the human genomes, as I said, and the researcher find out, have found that in our liver, the pathway, you have a phase two enzyme, phase, uh, phase one enzyme, phase two, phase three. But at, at all the environmental toxin, your medication, your food, everything has to go through liver pathway to go through that detoxification process in order to excrete. And some people, they do, uh, basically I call it that phase two enzyme, that gene, it seems they are down-regulated, so they are not as sharp, alert as they should be. So when they give the, the animal, uh, started with the animal, give them that uh, cruciferous vegetable, all of a sudden it awakens that gene, start a phase two enzyme. And that's what it came about, okay? So a lot of times when people have a, some kind of allergic reaction to the medication or this and that, or people say, why, oh, why do I do certain things I do? Because I, uh, the, or, uh, or I see my cancer patient prior to they even started with any treatment, some of them. If I have enough time, inevitably I will do a whole set of detoxification to get them at a much better place so that they can go through treatment more successfully, okay? And so, so over the, uh, the past uh, 30 years with oncology, just by seeing the patients, how they go through, it really gave me so many the revelation and put the science and the real, real practice together. It just has seen the amazing things. So this is one of the uh, very important things is that I constantly ask my patients, say, are you eating enough of these cruciferous vegetables? The more medications, the more alcohol they drink, the more they need that detoxification process or the environmental expo exposure. So, as I said, carotenoid family is a huge family, but the kind of thing, this is your biggest cellular defense, your, 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 your pawns, your chessboard game. They are the dispensable soldiers to protect the king and queen in the palace, 
okay, that, that's your cells, your DNA. Uh, so, so they give you the huge network antioxidant because they protect that entire network of antioxidant, protects your vitamin C, protects your vitamin E, protects all the other because they're the most outer layer of your cells. Okay, so carotenoids huge. So the deeper the carotenoids, typically we know the person is much healthier. So these are your, as I said, your leafy green vegetable, your yellow color vegetable, your tomatoes, that red color, your, your watermelon even, okay, and your corn, okay, instead of picking the white corn, preferably do the yellow corn, has much more that, um, that, 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 uh, that, that zeaxanthin or, or, or the, the yellow color in the corn, uh, which is another carotenoids, okay. So, so oh, lutein, that, that is. Okay, so decrease many different cancers, and on top of that is also your eyes, too. Lycopene and prostate cancer. A lycopene basically is your tomato. Um, I'm not going to go through all these, but we do know that through the research that we saw that lycopene, the uh, men who eat the tomato-based food two, three times a week, actually they have about 30% less in the pro, uh, uh, of developing prostate cancer. But don't just think it's a, just a tomato. Um, a University of either Ohio or somewhere, but the, one of the studies actually talked about uh, the, the cell group study, uh, cell, the cell study was that uh, tomato group can reduce by 30% the tumor cell growth. But then if you add tomato or the broccoli combination, it actually, the, 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 the prostate cancer cell growth rate actually reduced by nearly 69%. Okay, so it's almost doubled. The result, what we're saying from that study, we do know that instead of just eating one vegetable at a time, preferably eating two or three vegetables simultaneously because they can have that complementary as well synergistic effect. Am I making sense here? Okay, and so, so garlic, that huge group, I love, love, love this compound. Uh, although it brings such a terrible body odor and everything, right? So you can only eat a lot when you're, yeah, like COVID situation. <laughs> um, allium family, this is really the allium family, is your garlic, your onion, your leeks, your, 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 oh, the whole, a whole spang of that group. It, it not only is a super antioxidant, this is the some, uh, Dr. Mark Hyman actually, I believe that he was the one saying, this is the father of all the antioxidant. Even though it doesn't have an antioxidant like a vitamin C or a vitamin E, but this, the amount of bound antioxidant is so powerful, okay? It also has antiviral, antibacterial, antiviral effect. I do get a lot of phone calls during the COVID time. Tim, what do I do? I got COVID. Tim, I can't do this. My throat is hurting. What do you do? One of the simplest recipe, I say, just chop like your garlic, infuse in the water, warm water, and just guzzle it down. Guzzle it down and go to sleep. And hopefully next day you'll be better, right? You do that two, three times a day. Um, so now, because garlic is also a very strong, different way of a detoxification process in the liver. It's a precursor to something we call the glutathione. Okay, uh, glutathione is powerful in your liver to, to activate that de 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 detoxification process. And then I'm going to go faster, herbs, you all know the herbs, I won't go through uh, uh, in detail. The flaxseed study, I just want to give you a real quick one since this is my field. I find that this is so powerful and people often minimize the power of the food. Basically what it uh, what it's saying is the study is that Two groups divided, uh, divided this Canadian study uh, from the, uh, from the uh, uh, biopsy diagnosis to the time of a surgery literally takes about six to eight weeks. So this is a perfect time as researchers said, let's give the one group with a flaxseed muffin about 20, 25 grams of flaxseed muffin and the, the other group, uh, group A, and the other group B, just give them the fake muffin just non-flaxseed muffin. And they did not test anything else. They did not tell the woman to go change your diet, go exercise, or go, to change anything. Only do, they just do eat these muffins. 
So the average time was about uh, six weeks. At the end of the study, what they are trying to find is that how fast does flaxseed influence the cancer cell growth rate? Does can uh, the flaxseed influence the program cell kill? Does the flaxseed influence HER2 new expression because some women have this HER2 new expression in, uh, attached upon their cancer cell to tell them grow faster, grow faster? Okay, so does that have an influence on that gene expression? And does it even have any of the estrogen or progesterone effect on this woman? Because you don't want those. And so as a result of the study, as astounding, the proliferation rate is already even before any of the chemo or the radiation to even begin a surgery. The cancer cell already slow, slowed down its own growth rate. And program cell death increased by 30% uh, and the other groups no change. And the HER2 new expression to me is the most impressive one. It's decreased by 71%. So many of my breast cancer uh, patients have a HER2 new. And now they're done with their, all their, uh, all their uh, chemo and the radiation. What do you do now? One of the biggest thing I tell them, why not just institute this as a part of your practice and eating on your oatmeal and put on top of your or salad, just get it in. And because you know in due time is always doing something, ERP or no change. So, those, so take home message is to eat like a rainbow. Okay, really eat like a rainbow. And how do you, the, the, uh, and the other thing we talk about, as I said, I was going to give you some idea about, this is a, what our supermarket is. Costco is even worse. They have a three, four, five shelves or rows of stuff. And when I go in there, I'm totally confused. I'm constantly seeing people are just standing there completely at a loss, okay? And is this right or isn't right? And this is continue to grow and it's going to be continue to be exceedingly confusing. What I feel one should do is always eat a healthy diet as a foundation. The quantity, not only the quantity, but also the variety. It's not just the one item. You need to eat a two to three, as I said. And variety, change it up, change it up, change it up, okay? Not eating the same thing. For optimal health, not just as prevention, okay? Or to prevent a deficiency and fill the gap with uh, your, uh, it, it, you, you take a, a multivitamins to fill the gap, okay? And the goal, and the, talking about the multivitamins, so currently all the multivitamins in the marketplace is still based on the US, US deemed RDA, recommended daily dietary allowance. That was designed in 19, 1940s, World War II, for our soldiers, okay, to prevent basically just in hopes that they don't get sick, exhibit any nutritional deficiency. That was the one premise. And number two, average body weight at that time was 160, 150 to 180 pounds. Okay. And the life progress, and don't forget the premises was to prevent deficiency. That was USRDA. Okay. So are we overdosing people? I don't believe so. Okay, because our, our soil is also so depleted, as you can, uh, you know that. There's too many research talking about because pesticides, herbicides, and all that stuff, okay. And so the list goes on. I, I'm not going to get a political on those type of issues, but I feel, yes, there are times as we continue to age and we can't eat enough and our enzyme is decreasing in our system and our acid also reducing in our spiders in the stomach production. We do need some sort of supplement to help us to be healthier, okay, to bridge the gap. And I did, I remember I did one lecture about three, four years ago, two, 2018 sometime, about aging, optimizing the aging at the Rushmore community. Um, so, 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 so is something to, to kind of assess your medication and everything and chronic diseases. Okay, and so not all the supplement, how do you pick the supplement basically? Because not all the supplement are created equal. And 
I feel for the older population is easier one to, to take is in the powder form, not in the tablet form, because they may not disintegrate. Okay. You also want them to be as more comprehensive as possible. And the third thing is pick a good brand, because sometimes people say, oh, they're all the same. Because my husband had told me that many years ago, okay? Timmy, just the same thing. Even Dollar Tree has 99 cents back then, right? I said, you go take that thing. I won't even feed my dog with that thing, and they will let alone to take it. Because sometimes the compound doesn't disintegrate because I can do the test in my own office easily as well, okay? Because it all has to do with our gut. Remember, our gut is the thing determines. Can you break that thing down? And so, so, so with that said, is a common drug, the drug interaction, that's a huge, a huge thing. Okay, so take a look. Some of you may be on the Lasix, hydrochlorothiazide, and typically they will deplete a lot of your B vitamins as well as your zinc. Okay, that is something I'm genuinely concerned with my older population. Uh, metformin, some as for diabetes, a uh, classic one is that you need that extra B12. Okay, ACE inhibitor with like lisinopril, that's a one very common uh, a blood pressure lowering agent and tend to impact a little bit zinc. So if you say I'm, I'm semi-vegan, I don't eat much any animal protein, I don't, have, uh, I don't eat a, a certain food, then you probably, you may be zinc deficient. If you, you say, how do I know I'm zinc deficient? Basically, if you don't have enough taste. You just can't taste food or you have a very peculiar taste alteration, then I'll say that's also a clue, okay. Um, beta blockers, that's the other for arrhythmia, for the heart, that sometimes doctor use for high blood pressure, the ones that are, I call it, ending with LOL, uh, atenolol, metoprolol, the, the, uh, the OL, low stuff. And you need a probably coenzyme Q10 or some of the chromium. Um, a statin, that's one of huge one. Practically 60% American population are on the statins. So it will be a, your coenzyme Q10, take a look. And the other one I find is the H blocker, okay, or the Pepsid Prilosec, but I don't believe anyone is taking it for, uh, for the long time. Typically, most GI doctor would just say, don't take it more than three months. So short term will be okay, because those are the issue I see years ago, but I don't see as often as people take a long term of these PPI, like a, uh, a Prilosec, a Nexium, uh, you can take it for long term because it blocks a lot of different B vitamins as a mineral uptake absorption in your gut. And, oh, uh, what's the other one? Steroids, oh, I won't talk about unless there are. So uh, when Debbie was, my girlfriend Debbie was such a high dose steroids, uh, she was a maxed out under her steroid. That's why she gained all that weight uh, because that's a steroid side effect. I'm pretty sure some of the things are completely depleted. Okay, and so she started with that diet, it was complete from the ground, and I think that diet basically saved her from that steroid, all that secondary side effects, because it densing the nutrients. So, so why supplement all these vitamins and minerals so important besides chemical compound that influence that gene expression? Because foundationally is that all these, every single these vitamins and minerals, because our body cannot produce it, has to be from outside source, right? And the outside source, they also help you to regulate your genome stability accuracy and duplication, I, if that making sense to you, okay? And telomere lengthen, because when your diet is good, it, a telomere can be healthier too, in addition to your exercise and everything else. So, so, so that's what uh, basically talking about. So let's talk about what are, are we looking your plate. I'm not asking you to do such a fancy meal, okay? Um, but basically, basic principle is that you have a lots and lots of variety of vegetables in, uh, on the plate and a piece of protein. That's great. All right. And I, I, I use those photos because typically those pretty much because both me and my husband were getting older. And I'm very aware that we can't eat 
the way we used to, or just occasionally we'll do that. My husband loves hot dogs, loves the Costco's pizza. Okay, <laughs> so for, for, for me is a how can I give him something to help to reverse whatever the harm's done. It's not saying that you can't eat it, but eat smart, okay? Um, that's basically the wisdom about eating as we continue to age. So always load up of all kinds of different fruits and vegetables on your plate and have a piece of protein. That's pretty much our dinner. If, if I, I will say about 70% of the time, okay? And if um, that, and gradually change to about two to three times a week, just totally plant foods and plant protein, unless you add some cottage cheese to it, and that's fine, all right? And then, um, and I love it, just it, it, like just a salad, because as we get older, don't forget, because my seniors talk about aging nutrition, is that don't ever, ever underestimate your protein, because you need that protein. So, but the, the protein, instead of just eating the whole scoop, that tuna, fit, uh, tuna salad, how about dress it out and put a tomato, put on different things on it. And I love Chinese stir fry because this is what I would do, literally, because you can shrink that vegetable down, you can eat so much more. Okay, typically most people eat salad, a playful salad, right? But if I were to shrink down, that's only about a quarter cup. Literally just about a quarter of a cup. And uh, hey, what happened to it? Okay, so don't forget all your spices, herbs. One thing I did not discuss is that probiotics. I really believe that all we all will benefit from the probiotics. It doesn't mean that you have to go to the store to buy them. Just eat a kefir, eat a yogurt, add a sauerkraut to your salad or some kind of pickling things. Or if you like kimchi, add it. Because as you continue to journey, I call it journey, uh, eating more the vegetables and more the fibrous foods, your gut has its innate ability to repopulate all that probiotics, okay? Unless you are the kind of person say, I just can't eat all the fiber because I do have some clients, they just can't take fiber, okay? Or they have obstructed bowel, then we definitely have to use supplement, okay? And so those are the exceptional cases. But generally, I, I typically, I tell people, just save your money unless you absolutely need it after a course of antibiotics. Um, then basically just depend on the use of food. With all that said and done, a lot of people say, can I use it? Can you give me recipe, recipe, recipe? Yes, there are so many recipes. But they'll say, this tastes awful. But then when they come to my house and eat, I said, they said, this is delicious. What's the difference? And finally, I found this amazing quote from <laughs> Thomas Keller. A recipe has no soul, but when you put your loving care to the food, it's going to do something. So when you're preparing your food, no matter how simple it is, always infuse it with the greatest appreciation and love. And when you are eating that food, you literally can meditate and think. Every bite is going to nourish your body to the cellular level, even to the genetic level. That's what I tell my own clients. You remember and you see it. You literally could see it. When the food comes in your body, all that freshness is going to bring all that energy, all that life to your own life. So bless you all, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, we're going to take some questions. We have some uh, from the Zoom meeting, and then uh, we'll take some down in the audience as well. Um, and Can you elaborate? on the um, glycemic index. And the reason I'm asking you is because in the last five years or so, um, my, um, my kids, some of them are very, um, mm -hmm. have asked me every time I bake something, they said, Do you, did you use coconut sugar instead of regular sugar? Because coconut sugar has low, a very low glycemic index. So I don't know much about that, and can you give um, another example of something similar to coconut sugar? Uh, yes. 
The question is about the glycemic index. Basically, uh, this is a start getting into area we call not all the carbohydrates are created equal, not all the sugars are equal. They're sugar per sugar, they are all the same calories, right? One gram has a four calories. But the way they metabolize, we base on use it as a sugar, regular cane sugar as a base, has a glycemic, I mean, what impact we give a score like 99 and how they see how it responds, body response to that sugar response. So give that score as 99. But then, then you also have food that will give like say raspberry, blueberry, they have a glycemic index to say, I believe was only about 20 something. So a lot of times when people, we are trying to deal with the yeast infection, for example, or their overgrowth, bacteria overgrowth in the, the, their gut. And, and because I work with a group of um, integrative doctors, um, medicine doctors, so so one of the doctors would ask the patient, say, do the eat low glycemic index fruit. So we'll say eat the berries, eat the uh, kiwi, because they tend to have a lower glycemic index. Then comes down to coconut sugar or date sugar, or uh, you have, um, they just, their glycemic index about, I believe about 50, I think if I remember correctly. So compare with the sugar. So even though they have the same calories, but they may not create such a dramatic spike as the sugar would. Hope that makes better sense to you. Okay. Great. Okay, I have a Zoom question. Sure. Uh, are raw vegetables better or worse than cooked vegetables? Ah, it depends. That's a really is a great question. It depends. Uh, raw raw vegetable definitely you has a much more concentrated nutrients than cooked, right? Because cooked because heat would it destroys some. However, heat. Most of the time, because short-term cooking, it's not going to destroy the phytochemical compounds. Remember, the one of the biggest thing we're lacking is that phytonutrients. So from that aspect, if you're wanting to eat more, then I would say condense it. I thought I, I popped in the newer slide because I have one slide. My daughter sent me a picture with the cartoon. This couple have a whole bushel full, powerful of spinach. And the husband saying, is this what we're going to eat for tonight? And the wife said, well, we don't know until after I saute it. Because once you shrink it down, OK? So so, 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 so one of the, the other slides, because I, uh, the, so, so because usually you can eat just about that bit of a salad, right? Uh, raw vegetable. But then if you were to shrink it down, I call it real quick, you microwave it or you just saute it. That one cup of shrink, uh, spinach becomes just a quarter a cup. For some of you, it doesn't even worth one mouthful. So I typically say, could you even sit in, sit down, eat a one whole cup of cooked spinach, one whole cup already cooked? Most people say yes. I say, you know, you already eat four times of that spinach. So with that, uh, but then raw type of thing is definitely is healthy because live nutrients, okay? One condition, because this is a real case, I just, um, the, 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 I take this, um, uh, the, I don't, uh, I know she doesn't mind I use her case because it's very, very prevalent. As we get older, okay, this is something I sometimes I tend, even as a dietitian, I forget, because our gut through the wear and tear, and they may form the diverticuli. Diverticulosis, I don't know if you know that. Sometimes that chunks of vegetable when it's not properly chewed, or the nuts not being properly chewed, that's two things, and also not drinking enough fluid. They tend to be sitting stuck in that pocket and form infection. Okay, because recently I literally have two cases now. And even my husband had almost had a scare tactic because every time he eats nuts, then he gets this pain. And I know. And so the remedy is after you eat all these things, make sure you drink your fluids so you can flush it out. OK, great question. Uh, I have two questions. Yes. Why you talk about the flax seeds? Uh, I understand have you grounded or you can eat whole? Because I put in the cereal whole. Is that OK? To maximize flaxseed effects, it should be ground. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, okay. I have another question. Is uh, I have macular degeneration. Do you know any food and nutrients could help uh, cure it or reduce the effect? What what degeneration? Mm, macular degeneration oh, of the eye. Yeah, Got any it. food and nutrient that you know. The carotenoid family is a huge one. Carotenoid. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank and you. And the other one, definitely take a look at your zinc level, the, your copper level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Oh, very, anytime. very good lecture. Very thank informative. You. Thank you. Is there some kind of a guideline to look at keeping your carb intake at a reasonable rate when you're told to cut down on the carbs in your diet? There isn't such a specific one, all based on your body weight, per se. Okay. Um, so uh, first thing that I would say, take a look at your sugar intake. Okay. If you say you don't do any sugar, then that's not an issue. If there is sugar, then we'll start looking because what I tell people, even the Heart Association is saying that American population is just eating too much sugar because everything is loaded with sugar. Your, your jam is loaded with sugar, right? Um, and that's a simple carbohydrate. Ketchup has sugar, cereal has sugar, bread has sugar, sauces, oh, ah, yeah, yeah, all these salad dressing sauces, everything is sugar loaded. Those are the first thing I would say, it's, it's an invisible sugar. So take a look, and Heart Association basically saying for women about um, uh, 25 grams per day, 24 grams for men about 36 or 30 grams because I, I, I lose track of those. So typically, uh, it, it just cutting the visible added sugar out first. Okay, that's something I would do. And secondly, if it's still not right, if you are not eating those already, then I will take a look at your overall that plate. Okay, the visible carbohydrate then most of the, for most population will be your bread, your your cereal, your potato, your pasta. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a Zoom question. Uh, do frozen fruits or ber um, frozen fruits or berries and vegetables have the same anti-inflammatory properties as fresh? Yes. Oh, great. Yes. And sometimes the frozen ones may be even even better because they pick it at the ripe and yeah, and freeze it at the ripe season. Okay. This. How much time do you suggest? to take in food preparation a day? Very good question. Yes, I paid attention to that. I really do because I'm, I, 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 don't, I, I don't want to spend so much time. So I, I would say use myself one meal. It can take me about between 30 minutes to 45 minutes to prepare. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then take us 30 minutes to eat. When I'm in the crunch, I hope my food prep will be just about 15, 30 minutes to be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I do spend time. A food prep is something I will, I'm willing to commit to. People say, it takes so much time. Who's got a time? <laughs> but, yeah, and I said, I take that time. So I sacrifice a lot of other things, you know. Huh? No, breakfast, I'm typically very simple. Uh, yep, uh, breakfast I eat leftover because I like uh, the people say, what did you eat this morning? I said, what? I have my leftover last night and have a little bit of pork with a pot of uh, potato and kale. Yep. Uh, we have a farmer's market here. Oh, on yeah, beautiful. Friday, and I can get peaches and nectarines at $3 a pound. Safeway it has the same tasty fruit for $1.99 a pound. Which should one get in terms of health? Hmm. Depends. <laughs> How would I say this? I think the biggest thing is eating them. That's number one. Hmm. Number two, based on your budget. Of course, on the farmer's market, they are always fresher because they are ripe picked early that morning or the previous night. Okay, so typically because the fresher the better, okay, and right off the ground. And if you say you picked up Safeway, uh, the Safeways, we don't know how long it's been sitting there, and they also been picked when they're very green, 
and they haven't been fully ripe. Farmers market typically say fully ripe. And a lot of times farmers market also very high, um, I mean they're organic. Okay, and I, I get you. My, 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 my husband debates that with me all the time. Why would you want to go to farmer's market? You're paying tr triple amount of dollars, but then once it's in his mouth, he said, oh gosh, I can't believe this is so good. <laughs> right? right, because that's that difference. But, but my point to people is that as long as you make an effort to eat it, and, and if you can afford it, of course, do a farmer's market. And farmer's market is also to support private individual farms, the owners and all these. And I honor them, them really, yeah, because it's, it's not easy. Thank okay, you. I have a Zoom question. Um, if you have a diagnosis of GERD, um, you're really avoiding eating acidic foods such as you know, tomatoes, citrus, garlic, onions, all that stuff. How do you still do an anti-inflammatory diet when those basics can't be had? Gertz has a lot of issue, right? Um, depends. I, I think there's a question before. I, I mean, common have to be before that. The Gertz is due to anything else. But before I move those food out, depends. Um, PPIs for a little short while, meaning that proton pump inhibitor, most uh, doctor will use that. Um, the most offender will be alcohol, tea, coffee. Those are the three, the well-known offender, rather than onions and garlic and all these, okay? And the fourth one can be very hot, spicy foods. And the fourth, uh, the fourth one or the a fifth one will be the, if they're acidic foods like uh, tomato-based food. Uh, that's about to set people on fire too. And so with those, and what I typically deal with at GERDs is that, you know the trick? You want to know the trick? Um, it's not a medical science, but worse, okay? Because a lot of kitchen stuff, it's a powerful tool, is that, you take a lemon peel, you don't take a lemon, you give a lemon to your neighbors, but you keep the lemon peeled, lemon skin, you cut a piece just like your thumbnail size, and you just chew on that lemon peel and chew it and chew it and swallow it, and three, four, five times a day need it, and that is best remedy for GERDs while you are. I typically, I work with patients that slowly reducing certain things. So if they have been on the medication, my first goal is hopefully adjust the food and reduce the medication, get them off the medication, but at the same time I have them using the, 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 the lemon peel, lemon rind, because the power is in that lemon rind, it's not in that lemon juice, okay? The power, the, all that nutrients are truly in that skin. So chew it, eat it, in weight and shape and form, even shred them in the, bake your chicken, bake your fish, add it in, shredding your salad, just eat them things, even the bitterness, that's what is good for you. And so I literally, even with my cancer patient, they say, it's amazing, Tumrin, why don't you just tell that everybody? Yep, now I'm on the TV now. We talk to the whole community. <laughs> yeah, uh, to me, give a try, give a try. Yes, yeah, to see if that works, yes. And okay. by the way, the GERDs, okay, I'm going to say one thing. Some people, they, uh, they, may, uh, they may not fit that profile. I call it, they may not fit the profile, like say all those things. And some people, by eliminating, elim eliminating dairy and uh, what's the other thing, wheat, and all of a sudden their GERDs is gone. I, again, I use my girlfriend, Debbie, because she gained so much weight, of course she, 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 she ended up with the GERDs. And she avoid all the food that we, we talked about, right? The triggers, including all the garlic, onion, everything. And it didn't even solve any problem until she eliminated her dairy and the wheat. And the problem is gone. So she's not a textbook example, not at all. Yeah, so there's always exceptional case. I have two quick questions. One is, do you encourage or discourage low-fat dairy products, and the second question is, 
Is it better to drink a lot of water in place of tea or coffee? I limit dairy, okay. Perhaps because the field I am in. Um, uh, but I do, um, uh, the dairy I use is organic, low fat. I don't use full fat, neither do I believe in the non-fat. I, I believe the small amount of milk fat is very beneficial to human body because it's totally different types of fat, conjugated linoleic acid, okay, GLA. Um, so, so, so I use the low fat item, I use organic, and when it comes to cheeses, I only use uh, outside of the United States, I'm sorry to say that, because we just add too many things to our feed our dairy. Yes. And second question, you have second question. Uh, tea. Oh, tea, tea. Uh, basically, I think the fluid's important. Uh, it's not one over the other, but balance it out. Right. I don't suggest drinking completely just water, okay? Because tea has tremendous benefit. Absolutely, the cellular regulation, antioxidant, anti-cancer, you name it. And coffee is also very powerful of antioxidant. As the, so current research really, two, two cups a day really is great. Prevents Alzheimer as well as, uh, as, well as, uh, as uh, uh, the cellular protection, antioxidant, and all that different things. Yeah. So, so I will never say take coffee or tea out, but add them in into your, your water rep repertoire. And I don't believe just drinking water. I know some people, they only drink water, but I don't. I really don't. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, I wanted to ask, um, for seniors, uh, what do you think the minimum supplements should be? Should it be multiple vitamins, calcium, and D3, or something like that? Or Oh, that's a complicated whole lesson <laughs> there. But for seniors, yes. To, and to answer you very quickly, yes, a daily multivitamins for senior, I really believe, is needed. Absolutely. Okay. Because there's no way people can eat. If I were to give you another diagram, the RDA that's, that Centrum, on Centrum developed, again, based on the years ago, right, uh, 1950, uh, 1940s. But 1985, no, 1990, and the industry start differentiating because research, we start changing to Centrum Silver for young, Centrum Silver for senior. And then eventually they hold for a pregnant woman. And then they start breaking down for men, for women, a little bit different. Okay, why is that? All because of research. But the foundation element, they haven't changed. The reason for Encentrum Silver is because we realize that seniors require a little bit more B12 and need a little bit more uh, zinc and does not need iron. So they took that away. So that's the biggest difference, okay? Um, so I do believe that you need it because that foundation to prevent the deficiency, whatever you're eating, right? And it, so this becomes a bridging that gap to give you more, much more complete. In terms of vitamin D, that's a one of uh, the thing, the old, old, old thing to me is almost like 20 years old, but it's still relevant. Um, people do need that vitamin D support, even though it, it, uh, uh, research shows that one person only needs a 600 unit. I really don't believe that's important, uh, that, 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 that's adequate at all. Mm -hmm. And typically, I believe most internists will say just 2,000 per day will be enough, okay? Mm -hmm. But I, for my own patients, cancer patients, I have them do a set of lab for, for, uh, for vitamin D because, so I can properly dose them. Mm -hmm. Because there are level we call, I never want my patient to be just as okay. I don't like the word okay because to me is, what does that suppose to mean? Yeah, it's okay, because $10 in the bank, you're okay. But wouldn't you like to have about a, a good about $500,000 in the bank? Or because you cushion up that, that, that $10, in, a ten that even $1,000 is not going to get you much anywhere. And that's an analogy. So I want them to have a higher level. So with the, with the nutrition, we are talking about deficiency. 
adequacy, then you have the optimal level, you have upper level, but the upper level we start paying attention. And then you have a toxic level. But right now, I feel the most healthcare people seems to just want people to be at the min minimum level as long as they are not bankrupt, that's fine. No, I'm not content with that because I know my patients. I know I myself, I want the optimal level for optimal health, for optimal longevity. We're all gonna go, but I hope that we're gonna go, even get sick, only the last few, few minutes, a few days, that's it. And because I look at my own parents, I'm eternally grateful. They've been very healthy and very well. My mother at the age 96 or 95 diagnosed with a bladder cancer. I said because that's age related. So about, yeah, six months, because I was with her for pretty much six, eight months, and she passed. And was pretty good, she didn't struggle too much, it's great. So she lived a vibrant, she was totally independent by herself. She does everything herself. So lived all the way up till age 94, very well. So wouldn't that be great, right? And, and that's what I'm talking about, is about optimal level and don't ever settle for just adequate. So I don't like the word, a lot of time patients tell me, my doctor tell me I'm okay. I said, what does that mean? You're right, okay. Okay, I have a Zoom question. Yes. Um, at the beginning of the presentation, you showed pictures of a man's body with red spots. What helped the man improve his skin symptom, and what is the role, what role did prednisone play, if any? I'm not sure if the gentleman used prednisone because I was added a person at the end because nothing seemed to work, so doctor brought me in, so we changed the diet. But uh, the nutrition didn't really, I, I won't say nutrition didn't work, but did not bring the result that we wanted, okay? And plus, he couldn't really follow the diet by himself. That's a very difficult tall call to do this, to do that, right? Unless you have personal private chef. So he was on the daily multivitamins, but then we didn't see a difference. So finally, the doctor just said, let's try a totally different set. I call it as a very special formulated supplement, okay? And so then all of a sudden, it just worked, but still t took him 10 months, uh, 10 weeks, okay? And, but it's pretty much right because I typically tell my patients, if you want to try a certain set of supplement, give it time because it's not magical like antibiotics will see a result in two days. Uh, typically when something in the cellular, especially if your body is so depleted, so many different things are regulated, and that just all of a sudden works. So till this day, nobody knows why it worked, how it worked, honestly. All we know, just something is not, he wasn't absorbing, something he was deficient, something wasn't connecting. And so once you give everything well together, voila, and the body just starts singing its own symphony, in a sense. Okay, so, so that's the only thing, I, I don't have an answer for that. What works? We don't know. We really don't know. We just, and he was just happy, oh, as long as it works, who cares? <laughs> right? If one person has multiple or more than one medical condition or issues, should uh, do you recommend uh, that person to do elimination diet first to find the root cause of that uh, condition? Dep no, it depends on the condition. depends on what we're talking about. If it's a GI issue, or, I mean a lot of things because we, we start seeing that in the quote unquote the functional medicine arena, okay? And doctors are doing a lot of elimination. Yes, yes, but, but it depends on what we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for all your time, and thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all of you. Thank you.